Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the TSM Invitational. We are live in Sweden right now with four of the top teams from Europe overall. We're going to see first up today is going to be Mortality versus SK Gaming, and then followed by that one, we will be the best of three matchup, also alongside the TSM, and they'll be facing off against Exposed Secrets. So all these games will be brought to you live today by a Twitch. I'll be bringing you the action from here in terms of the interviews, live at the event, along with the crowd alongside. But for now, we're going to be heading over to the casters and the caster desk, where we're going to see Ian Brandon and Scott Gandhi bringing us all the action from the game. Take it away, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the TSM Invitational. Gandhi joined by DM. DM, it is, it is early here in America, <laughs> to say the very least. It's like, what, like 100 o'clock in the morning? I, I, I guess, yeah. yeah 100 yeah, o'clock yeah. in the just morning sa sa sounds about accurate, man. But uh, <laughs> coming up here, we do have Mortality taking on SK. Now, yeah. uh, for those of you who may not be paying attention into the SPL, maybe you're not kind of new to things, just trying to check it out. Mortality has been dominating SK, and in the most recent game, they kind of it wasn't the best series there for SK. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Though we can't count them out because oh, SK God, no. came into the last land they went to as the bottom seed and took home first place. Yeah. Now SK, correct me if I'm wrong, is more of a land team than on an online team. Correct? I mean, I would suppose so. I mean, they've done pretty well for themselves at land, um, outplacing Cloud9 at the launch tournament, winning the last regional that they went to. Uh, and now today they're going to start off against uh, first seed currently uh, for EU SPL, and that's of course going to be Mortality. Yep. And by the way, Kakolkin is actually going to be playable here this week. Uh, it is time to see Tornadoes back on the map, which I know some people are like... Oh. Another Whirlwind? Whirlwind. Whirlwind now. You have to change they, all the they names. Look, they, they look... <laughs> I like the new names. I like the, I like Zephyr instead of Squall. I like that better. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> you would. So, Chalk getting banned out, uh, as well as uh, Nemesis, expectedly Mercury, and there goes Miss Nua. Yep, and you know, Nua has been such a flavor ban here, especially yeah. in the European scene. In, in North America, we actually are seeing it get picked every single time, but on the other side, we are going to have Mortality grabbing Nemesis. I like that. And, dude, Raffer is actually 3-0 and with Nemesis here so far in the league, so he's really happy about this one. And they actually picked Jean Quay. They picked it into That him. was the whole point. <laughs> the whole point is you pick Nemesis and the other team won't pick Jean Quay, and they picked it anyway. SK really, I guess, wanted Jean early. Uh, they're also going to grab Freya. You're going to see Giannis picked up there, hovered on. Immortality uh, does have one more pick this round. It looks like it's going to be Ra. Yeah, Ra. Ra's always going to be a good one. You know, there's a lot of versatility here. I mean, yeah. looking at it, you know, you could say, oh, is that going to be a Yana solo lane? Is that going to be a Ra solo lane? Finally, Geb. And finally, we are going to see Geb, which actually, it's surprising that it's taken him this long to kind of go far. Normally, we see, you know, supports get picked up here in the first three picks. Yeah, to, to see him uh, get that far down is pretty intense. Um, Sun Wukong's still on the table. Athena's still on the table to uh, very popular supports as is as well. Uh, as we go back into the banning phase, first option is going to be given uh, to SK Gaming. Now, they still need a Hunter. They still need, it looks like, maybe a support depending on what Nemesis does, and they're going to take the Hunter out with uh, on her. Ooh. On her isn't bad. On her is one of those gods right now, especially in Europe, where everyone's seeing a lot of success. Everyone has basically a winning record of either 67% or higher with Honor. Right. So it's like, get him out of there. I get yeah. it. <laughs> but, you know, it is kind of weird. I would have kind of liked to see a Ooh. Athena ban. Habwa banned. I like that. I mean, he has incredibly high burst damage. Someone like Giannis would be just taken right down. I mean, if he doesn't get away from that crushing wave, that thing can just spell disaster. Uh, option back over to SK. They are going to counter here, it looks like, with a Hunter pick. Uh, leaving Apollo on the table, they are going to take Rama. Uh, I assume we're going oh. to see a Rama pick. I mean, uh, an Apollo pick. Yeah, I, uh, Apollo definitely seems to be the one that makes the most sense. I mean, you know, his kit's so good. He has so much maneuverability around, across the skies, everything. Um, excuse me, sir. Is that the... It's oh. a AMC. Okay. AMC. Perhaps Mor he's better on land. Mortality <laughs> must know that this is best of three as we lock into a Muzin Cobb and Ymir. Uh, now, we have seen AMC, I think, one time in the SPL, and it was a disaster. 
I mean, yeah, well, yeah, no, no. Was, uh, he's con he's definitely considered by most to be bottom five in the game right now. So to see him get picked up into you know a prize pool of thirty four thousand dollars is is curious. Uh, Mortality must have a pretty serious strategy now. Going into the laning phase, Ymir Muzenkab. Now that's a push lane. They have significant amounts of push between Honey and Glacial Strike to ensure that they can out push the Shockwave Astral Strike combination. But at the same time, once we get to the end game. AMC is a sitting duck, and Rama puts himself into the air. Well, what's so weird to me is the simple fact that, you know, DeFrezzi has seen so much success from Athena. Like, he's, see, he's been playing right. so, so well, and it's really just because Mortality, when they win, they've had the game secured from the 15-minute mark on, right. which I mean, is where Athena shines. I, that, and the last time that we saw his Athena, he didn't do the Midas Boots sovereignty yeah. rush. He went, like, hide of the, the urchin into yeah. Witchblade <laughs> for movement speed, and it was incredible. So they're really switching their strategy up here. And they have a maybe a little bit strange of a lineup, but we're going to take a look at the player profiles here. Uh, coming onto the screen, you are going to see Mortality, of course, versus SK Gaming. Yep, yeah, that's going to be Raffer, Fexes, Sayo in the solo lane. And I think, you know, for this TSM Invitational, I think it's very important that Sayo has a good event. Yeah. You know, he, he's either, you know, hit or miss. And then, obviously, Moex and DeFrezzi on the right side here coming out of SK Gaming. Captain Twig, Zeros, Badger, Reels, and Maniac. You know, I, with Sayo, to me, it's, it's, it's not really hit or miss. It's either we win yeah. or we lose based off of how that solo lane does. That's true. So and that's strange to me, considering Sayo's going into this with a god he has never played. Amuz and Cobb goes into this game as <laughs> never played for reals. I mean, this is this is scary stuff for them. Well, I, you know the thing that is really really funny about Sayo is that he has eight out of ten gods played. Right? Yeah. Like, in his solo lane. So he has the highest god pool in the SPL. So now this makes it 9 out of 11 games that he's played recently. So he just – he shows he's versatile. It's going to be interesting to see how it works out. I think Raw is going to be a pretty safe pick for him. Uh, check out Maniac as well going into this uh, without having played the god uh, recently at least – um, and this is curious yeah. because usually, you know, Maniac being one of the top jousters in the world will play characters that are, you know, versed in joust. A lot of Aphrodite, a lot of Chung'e, um, you know, characters that really have a strong one-on-one -on -one presence. And of course, Vimana does, but we don't see him as much. And it's strange to me uh, that so many players are banking on characters that they don't have competitive experience with. Right. Well, you know, I think that's the thing about tournaments, right? Like, they've had a little bit of an off week. They have may have just tried it just a little bit and been like, you know, I really like what... You know, Vamana brings in here with the synergy with right. Jean Quay, right? But, you know, looking at looking at the solo lane, I mean, this is just going to be solo island. I mean, Ra, like, Sayo's just going to sit there and just farm up. Vamana's yeah. going to be doing the exact same. Obviously, if you're Sayo, you have to be a little bit careful because Vamana can blow you up oh, uh, yeah. in, in the earlier stages. And plus, you know, Sayo might get a little greedy, try to go in on him, and then in comes Colossal Fury. Now you have a big baby throwing it down on Do you him. think that we're going to see a Divine Ruin or Brawler's Beat Stick early from either of these players? I mean, we have... I wouldn't mind it. Yeah, I mean, I, would, I think I'd really like to see an, er, an early Divine Ruin kind of shutting that healing down. Yep. And then as they get into late game, it'll help against Jean Quay. It'll help against Freya. They need it. Yeah, they definitely they definitely need it. He he basically needs it because Vimana, depending on how it goes, I mean, we've seen, you know, the Stone of Gaia rushed on Vimana, and it's yeah. always like, okay, now we, we really can't kill him at all. So that's always going to be one of the things that a little precarious here. But I think... I think AMC, <laughs> he has his work cut out for him here uh, with Rama. He, like, that's going to be a very, very tough lane matchup. And it, what does he need to do to win that? I guess it depends. I mean, I'm really looking at more individual player performance as we get into, let's say, the 8-9 minute mark. Once the supports start to be roaming around the map, how are these uh, two players going to fare without having that babysitting going on? Yeah. So eh, that, that that's big. That is big. Yep, yep, yep. So we're going to be jumping into the game here. Uh, there is no uh, delay on the live client right now uh, for our TSM Invitational, in which we will be starting off once again uh, with Mortality Esports, current top seed uh, in EU for the Smite Pro League, and then SK Gaming uh, closer to the bottom of the barrel. Yep. So taking a look already off the beginning here, we have a couple of interesting things here. Sayo actually going with the Boots 1 with the Vamp Shroud, also grabs an early sprint. I like this. And it's good because, you know, on the other side, 
Maniac does have the heavy hammer. Yeah, so he's going to look to aggress very early. This is something that a lot of players have been starting to theory craft, uh, dealing with the heavy hammer early, a little bit of extra movement speed from boots, uh, get the extra sprint, you know, kind of burst movement speed to get you away from the person. Uh, something that has to be dealt with, and the fact that we haven't seen him is strange to me. Bakasura right now has like literally one bad matchup in the solo yeah. lane, and that's Poseidon. That's the only bad one it's he's the got. I only mean, matchup he loses. Regurgitate alone turns everything into a cone, and you can just see oh, yeah. the damage and the plus the jump. I mean, he it he, is. He does a lot of damage very quickly. Thank NQ but, for that. Yeah, NQ really, really shaped that solo lane oh, yeah. lately. But we're getting into the minions spawning. Ten seconds till camps. It looks like we're not going to have any invades. A rather precarious ward going to come out to ensure that there's no invade towards the top side. Sayo and Fex is going to be able to take this uh, right camp out. Looks like left side. Uh, we're going to see Jean Quay as Captain Twig, and then of course Reels uh, right to back over towards the blue buff. Otherwise, this is this is the tried and true start. Yeah, and you know, Mortality's Raffer actually just going with the red all by himself. He's going to be able to rotate over, and then so he's hits not level two have off it yeah, too. He's going to get level two off this. They both might be able to as well here. So this is actually going to be interesting. Normally, we kind of see like you know, it's a three man stack on mid harpies, then it rotates back to blue. Right, but it looks like they they weren't too threatened uh, by the I guess imminent invade. Uh, so they tried to get the most amount of the experience, getting Raffer to level two, uh, and then of course Sayo going into this lane is going to be very very close to level three after this wave. Um, now we're looking at Maniac here, he has kind of an option. They should have been putting out more pressure. The whole point of, of the weakness oh, wow. of the solo red. Oh, yeah, what is oh, this? Oh, my God. D-Frezzy and Moax actually going to go ahead and rotate over, grab the damage buff here. And, you know, Badger, obviously, he's going to be walking over that ward. He's in no trouble at all. But that is something. That is a very quick and early rotation. So now they come back into the lane. We have the damage buff here on D-Frezzy, and Moax has the blue. That was troubling to me, to watch Reels' positioning. He knew the rotation that had to come out to get back to the lane from Frezzy and from Moex, and yet he backed off using Astral Strike on just the melees, not trusting in his Geb in the early game to keep him safe. Uh, if, maybe, maybe it's early over there too, but uh, honestly, that's a little worrying. Yeah. Well, we are going to see a decent exchange here. Captain Twig and Fexus. That dot damage. Oh, my God. God, Captain Twig, Jean Quay doing so much damage. Fexus does have to be worried. I mean, he does have a gank here. I don't think Captain Twig's in too much trouble no. here. If anything, Raffer might be in more trouble. You know, I'm looking at there as well. Fexus uh, using Unstable Vortex, wasting more of his mana without actually getting the last hits. Beautiful card. Going to hit three, get the heal off, as well as push Fex back. Now, you can see some damage came out onto the creeps, but still Captain Twig sitting pretty in the 2v1, having no issue whatsoever. Yeah, and that's the thing, right, about SK. SK always shows up on land. At least so it seems. So I, they need this as well. They're sitting at like the bottom two of the European SPL. They want to say, okay, guys, we're just we're better on land. They need to get this win. The last thing you want is to have a poor performance here and then go back online, go against the Challengers Cup, and then lose. It looks like Raffer has left the speed on the ground. It's likely he's just trying to save some time on the rotation uh, ability that speed's going to give him by backing after he grabs it. No, it looks like he's going to... Nope, he's going to yeah head back there. So he won't lose uh, too much time on the speed buff. Has a full two minutes with it. I expect a lot of ganks to come out. You know, with him hitting level five and Junk Wei having that inherent weakness uh, uh, against it, I'm wondering if he's going to try to make another play for mid with help from Janus or if maybe he's going to go towards left. I don't see him trying to rush down the baby. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that's going to be a thing. I mean, that this is going to be so tough. They're going to need to put some early pressure here on Sayo or Maniac just because, you know, these guys are going to get buffed. And not, they're not going to be able to get a kill in this lane. You yeah, know, it's going to be the two of them. It's going to be hard. If anything, I think Sayo's a little bit more gankable with certain amounts of CC chaining. You know, maybe if they get a good banish into the knockup coming out yeah. to clear the path. But without that kind of pressure, it's going to be rough. Now, if they don't abuse that fact early, Sayo's going to start to get greater sprint online, allowing him to make sure that he doesn't get uh, affected by slow. So things like Umbrella Rang and Pulse aren't going to have the same gank potential that they would have right now. Yep. And we do have a little bit of a three-man grouping here. And, you know, AMC, I, I still, like... Honestly... Like, I look on it, and I'm like, you know... We should see more th pressure coming out onto the bug here, considering the fact that we just had a three-man grouping to the mid lane. Why aren't we seeing them try to rotate over and take down a character that has no escape probabilities? Uh, maybe they're just afraid of Defrezzy. I, I mean, if you look at the map, I mean, you, you can see SK has, what, one ward down currently right yeah. now, and it's by Gold Fury, so they have no vision. So 
it kind of makes sense to not really push up too too much just because you never know what's lurking in there but oh. in the mid lane here there's a lot of damage going down we got gotta to waste it all to actually out. too yeah yeah that was uh raffer used divine judgment right there and did not get what he was looking for a good rotation coming out from freya gets a nice banish off as raffer wastes his ultimate and any pressure going forward well that that's a hard thing with nemesis jungle right like you don't really have like a banish or anything you have to rely on them basically being out of position right and in a tournament everyone's going to play so so careful that when do you actually you, you i don't think we'll see nemesis come into play until at least the early lane phase is over so, um, looking at Reels' goal here, he's sitting at 1460, which means he should have enough to go back and finish up those Devs Gloves, uh, whereas Moex has actually already done so. Uh, good timing by him is going to get him a little bit ahead of the stacks here, level 7. Uh, also, with that solo experience, should be, I mean, slightly ahead at this point. We see him at uh, 550 experience per minute, Reels sitting at 520, and he is getting some experience right now as well. So, he does have a very tiny lead. The stacks are getting started. His boxing potential is very high. I mean, in the 1v1, he will likely beat Rama, but as the team fight phase starts, it's going to be much more in favor of the uh, extra uh, avatar of Vishnu. <laughs> you just had to add that in, did you? Love it. You had to add that in. Uh, well, we are seeing an early Aegis come out of Captain Twig. I actually like this play. Tier 2 boots going up as well, so he's going to be playing very, very solid safe. I'm assuming he's going to probably, based on how everything's going in his lane, he has no reason to not build a Warlock Sash. He has no reason not to. I mean, he's getting right. farm uncontested. That's right. I mean, and but I see no uncommon sashes, no golden sashes on the field yeah. just yet. Everyone kind of looking for that movement speed. Uh, boots are getting started onto Fexes already. We see Warrior Tabby for Raffer is done. Sayo has the Shoes of the Magi across the way. Uh, of course, we are seeing the Guard Boots come out, Shoes of the Magi again. And then two more pairs of boots as well as uh, Maniac trying to push forward there. Doesn't quite contend with the Raw Heal and takes a huge chunk of his health uh, for his troubles. Beam going to be with there but he will lose some experience uh and rather i'm sorry some gold as he moves forward maniac does get the brunt of it but he loses a little bit plus a pretty big chunk of his hp isn't that the worst when you're going up against the raw and you just have that countless slow on you and it feels like a lifetime and you're not it gonna beat lifetime. it you're not gonna be like oh okay let me beat this like five second slow you're just gonna take it and pray to god you don't get searing pain in the back of the head speaking of slows maniac has opted into creeping curse which is curious to me considering sayo has already opted into sprint uh one more level of sprint uh, and that's going to ensure the creeping curse and or creepier curse will be wasted. He'll need that weakening curse online to even gain an effect from that ability. You think he was just trying to go for a hard counter there, not looking at the items that Sai was actually building? Maybe he's just looking for the healing reduction as they get to it. Now, um, Defrezzi has gone into the curse blade here. He is going to opt once again away from the Midas boots Witch and away blade. from the meta and go into the Witch Blade early for the movement speed. I would have liked to see Defrezzi also go with a blink instead of finishing uh, a curse blade. I would have liked to see him just get the blink. I mean, how many times do we see a Ymir really just kind of stumble into a fight and blow everything? Like, yeah. Everyone knows what his kit's going to do. He really needs to blink in there, over a wall, freeze someone, knock up into his ult. So, uh, usually at this point, we start talking about sentry wards. Uh, for some teams, it's still a little bit early, but a lot of the top teams are really starting to invest more. Yep. And it's curious to me to see the first investment into sentry wards coming out from the mid laner, Fexes, uh, who is not using it just yet. He's holding on to it, I guess, for when they attempt to go for the Gold Fury. Yeah, it's got to be for the Gold Fury, right? Like, it has to be. That's Ooh. the only reasoning here is there's going to be some damage here coming down. Sayo is in a world of trouble here. Has a little bit. In comes He's Colossal Fury. He does have the heal. He's going to be able to stay alive just a little bit, but Maniac oh, should miss. Hit. Oh, no. Oh, Searing Pain barely missing. He does have the enemy wave there as well. T takes a little bit of the laser. Sayo, Maniac's is he going to aggress? Mono. Oh, Man, my. He's at a mono. Sayo should push forward here. I think Sayo's afraid of the, the minions. I think he thought Freya might be rotating over. She wasn't available on the map. So Maniac repeatedly baiting out here. He is getting stopped. He's going to have a, a hard play. time clear clearing the next wave. Honestly, Sayo got a little bit lucky there. Maniac was very late on the cancel of Clear Your Path. Oh, oh God. Was he in the shop? <laughs> oh, left side damage coming out. Frezzy going to be picked off from the sky. Real ZX going to find it as he's going to try to turn onto Moex here, who's kind of stuck in the backside. Oh, beautiful all coming out from Janus as they're trying to aggress once again. So far, a three for one across the field for SK Gaming as First Seed Mortality takes some quick trips back to the base. Yeah, and now Raffer says to himself, um, I think they're going for Gold Fury, guys. Do you want me to contest it? Now, this is going to be a very, very big play. This should be an early Gold Fury here for SK. 
Wait, Raffer, Raffer might have Hand of the Gods here. He could go for a steal. There is no level 3 hand going on right now. Will he find his way in? He's already getting very low. Hands are getting wasted. Too late on the dash. If he gets carded here, he can be in trouble. Oh my god, he got exploded. That was that was rough. Zeros just immediately countered it. Man. You know, with that, he already used the shield to try to combat uh, the Zhang Kui. Then used the dash to try to find his way in, but too little, too late. And then Zeros with a beautiful ult, somehow getting through that entire team fight without even having to use it. Uh, they find four kills plus a gold fury. SK Gaiman looking strong with a 2,000 gold lead. Well, how funny is it that just Freya, every time we see her, she just does so much damage yeah. in every fight. You, and Speaking of which... And, Right yep. there, zeros in the mid lane <laughs> with Captain Twig. No problem whatsoever. Rotates in, does a ton of damage. But we're looking at the Hunters here, Moex and Reels. Now, you know, taking a look at the board, uh, you can see Moex having some trouble. 1-1 one, one, and 0, uh, which is a little bit behind the 1-1-2 one, one, coming out from Reels. And I think that's where we saw the weakness in AMC. This is the team fight phase. You know, he got a few good hits off, a good swarm, good stinger. But then, you know, we saw Rama go up into the air, lay down the law with the damage, not only finding the first blood, uh, but giving his team enough pressure into the team fight to get himself baited and then go forward. But these two guys are pretty much even. I mean, 3 KDA to 3.1. The gold per minute was only uh -oh. like 25 off. Oh, this is trouble. That, that, that's a lot of damage there. Moax having no beats to get out of there. He's going to be forced Stinger to fight lands. this one. Stinger does land in, comes through space and times. They're actually going to back off of this one. They took a ooh, lot of ooh, damage ooh. there. He picked it back up. We're going to see a very short cooldown onto the Stinger, uh, which is going to give him more pressure in the lane so long as he can stick around. He does have some rather precarious hive positioning. We are going to see that one taken down. He would think he was just using that one for movement speed. Yeah, most likely. I think he was trying to do that just to kind of get out of there. He needed yeah. the additional kind of just juke around, use the minion suit. I'm surprised to, to see him get out of that one. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I thought that one was looking bad, and we finally are going to be seeing Blink 2 coming out of Frezzy. So we should be seeing him make his presence a little bit more known oh. here as he's going to get banished up. Zero's doing a lot of damage so far already. In comes the freeze. I don't think they have enough power here. And, oh, God, this is not looking good for Mox. He's going to get caught. This is a lot of trouble. Mortality's going to drop too really quickly with no rotation uh, help coming out from Fex is there. Uh, still, his ultimate is on cooldown from the last escape potential given, of course, to Moex. AMC once again going to take the dive is Frezzy, uh -oh. who is starting to fall behind 0-2 with no Midas boots. Oh, God. Sayo is getting chased by the entire SK team here. Maniac can't get a slow on him. Fast, so, unfortunately, though. Badger isn't able to get one. Dude, when you just see Geb just turn into the rock and you see him behind oh, you. Oh, mid lane. I'm sorry. It looks like Vex is uh, going to have to try to jump away once again, forcing himself uh, to use that portal defensively once again. But he does manage to escape. But a level 2 bead's going to be used in Brute Purification. We'll be on cooldown for the next two minutes. Yeah, and so there we're finally seeing the Golden Sash here coming out of uh, Captain Twig, which is good. So that soon he's going to be able to get that Warlocks on and then just start farming up. And, you know, they've dominated this entire game. So I'm looking at the gold uh, right now. Badge at 0, 0, 5. We're seeing Frezzy at 0, 2, 0, plus the Midas Boots being missing. He's down already almost 800 gold. Uh, and that's going to start being pretty rough for the team. You're going to see the Sovereignty come online. And the fact that he also uh, has the ability now to go into Blink without needing the shell right away. That Sov is going to play a huge amount of defense for the team. And a lot of defense that's going to be missing on the side of Mortality. Well, it's a 4,000 gold difference right now and a 5,000 XP difference. So yeah, which is massive. It's really, really big. And right now, I mean, Sayo hasn't been in too many fights. Obviously, he's a solo, and he needs to kind of get the farm up. But, I mean, he's like the – him and Raph are really the only ones who are even close. You know, SK really is just looking like a different team right now. From what we've seen in the SPL, I mean, we see – Two level 14s coming out massively ahead are the jungler, uh, which normally we don't see from SK. Right. And of course, Captain Twig, who usually uh, is pretty far ahead. They have a great amount of control around the map right now in terms of vision. Uh, not, to mount, not to mention the damage that they have done. And the teamwork potential has been huge. And, you know, something speaks like that so loudly when you pick a Zhang Kui into a nemesis. Yeah. Uh, though he did just take a massive portion of his <laughs> HP bar. Well, I think that was that's what I was getting ready to say. I was getting ready to say, you know, Raffer... I think he's a little bit upset with himself at this point because, you know, he has 13 minutes. They haven't been able to convert That's anything on Captain Twig at all. He built Heartseeker. Did he? Very, very early. So yeah, he's not he going for the attack speed we normally see. He's not going for the cooldown reduction that's usually uh, prevalent in the build as well. He's going to go into pure burst damage, uh, which is strange because this is Nemesis is not known as a character uh, that builds 
you know, a, a, away from her usual attack speed kind of rushdown. So to see him go into Heartseeker means that they have some kind of plan going here, but they need to get that in motion soon because the lead is just extending now. It's well, like, what, what do you think that plan even would be? I mean, look for the, the big ult. You know, get a lot of defenses from someone like Vamana, who is building into Height of the Urchin, or rather has built it, and then try to figure out a way to get to the back line safely and burst down a carry. We'll oh, Sentry Ward coming out from SK. Uh, Maniac in a strange position here as he's going to attempt to help, but he probably shouldn't have a line to this. He tries anyway, taking a lot of damage. Is Sayo going to be uh, forcing... Oh, did he steal that? <laughs> I think he did, He dude. took that away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he forces a rotation here out of Fexus. That's Even though beautiful. Fexus is going to be able... He's going there to basically grab red, but Maniac does have to be a little bit careful here. He's strolling through the jungle, not knowing that three members of Mortality are lurking behind the woods. Sayo is going to return to his respected lane. And then, meanwhile, nothing crazy really at all in the past like five minutes coming out from the duo lane at all. You know, well, we look at the past couple of games that we've seen from Mortality, or either we can talk about the whole SPL, uh, like we talked about. The wins and losses happen strictly off of Sayo. And this is the first game where Sayo's not really having an effect. He's 0-0-0. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh. Okay, so this is... This is the thing I was just getting ready to say, right, on that? Because Sayo's my boy. Like, I love Sayo. I think he's an amazing player, but... He either, when they win, he blows up his life. Right. He devours it. When he and loses. He, but he did get the tower. Yeah. When he loses, he normally loses bad. Nope. Like, yeah. He's like 0 and 3 going into 15 minutes. They're fed. He can't do anything about it. So, uh, this, we haven't really seen him. He's been okay. Like, in his most recent game, I think he played Nuwa, and he went like 2 and 1 with like 14 assists, and it was a perfect game for him. But this time, I mean, he does it's get the tower. Tough. He's pretty much the only person on the team on the team right now that has any kind of contention value. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, look at the damage coming out. Zero's rotated over, and Sayo couldn't even activate his sprint fast enough. I mean, he was forced <laughs> into beads here. Uh, but we do have a Warlock Sash online that's going to take 100 stacks from here on out to finish up, make sure that he gets that extra HP, extra damage. Uh, he already has a decent amount coming online as well, 300 health uh, and 50 magical power, and for the next 11,000 minutes, we're going to see him stack this thing up. Yeah, and you know, the thing that sucks for Sayo is that, you know, Maniac already has Hide of the Urchin online. Right. So he's got, he's got a lot of protections helping him out there, and he gets a little bit more health, and then you stack that with Colossal Fury. Sayo cannot burst him down. He's basically no. going to fight under tower, rotate around, maybe go for back RPs, just kind of stay in this game as much as possible. But he's in a world of trouble. He's going to need a nice rotation out of Nemesis and probably Giannis to even do anything. Speaking of Maniac kind of hiding off to the side here, uh, you can see Ra hanging very far back. He's going to look for stacks. He'll gain two there, uh -oh. but Maniac freely diving. Uh, Sayo moving forward doesn't have the weakening curse that he's going to need or the Divine Ruin to try to stop that Colossal Fury, allowing Maniac to just really pressure repeatedly. Yeah, he really needed to get that Divine Ruin out there as soon as possible. Maniac, Ooh, is he going to go for trouble. this here? There's going to be a lot of damage. Sayo is going to be able to... Kind of slow him down just a little bit. So much damage. Down goes Sayo. 0 and 2. SK continuing to destroy. Meanwhile, there is going to be another fight here at the Tier 2. That is going to be Zeros just pushing him out. The damage of Freya is insane at this point. Yeah, it's it's massive. And now with a beautiful four-man rotation, uh, SK gets enough pressure off to get most of the tower's health down. Find themselves... <gasps> no. Yes. Already. Okay, so we're looking here. All eyes are going to turn to Janus. Does he spot it? He does just in time. Nemesis, though, completely out of position goes towards the tower does he even realize they're going for it he sees the lava now but too little too late a great rotation is going to take a 17 minute Amazing. fire giant that is absolutely fantastic they knew Sayo was out of it they pressured they had the map presence they know that there was two people over there at the tier two that was a brilliant brilliant fire giant and you know i love how all these kind of plays come out on land play and not online right you kind of just keep a little bit in your books but it's really, when you're on land, the teams who are experienced always do the veteran, veteran stuff. Get to your objectives. So we have 7,400 gold separating the teams as well as 9,200 experience. And what makes this even bigger is the fact that they now have Fire Giant. That's a ton of damage for both magical and physical. It's a great amount of regeneration. And given the fact that they're going to go into like a tower pushing phase here, that regeneration is going to be so huge. Now, right side tower is going to be taken. Two towers down now for the boys of Mortality with only one tower answered. 
This is going to be trouble. Someone needs to rotate over or Miniac is going to just destroy this tower. Well, yeah, look at the positioning here out of Mortality. Mortality is split in like a 2-2-1 right now. This is way old school to the beginning of Smite. Uh, and they really can't answer. Maniac is going to be able to I think just wear down on this so bad. And on the left side, oh, you can just see up. the damage. I mean, Reels cutting through everything. He does have the Executioner online, just getting a lot more damage here. Mortality is in a world of trouble here. They have to stop this push now. I'm really surprised to see Mortality crumble so hard. I mean, right now, they're 12,000 gold behind, hot off of a bunch of towers getting destroyed. That was Tier 1s. That was two Tier 2s as well. The Gold Fury's coming up, and they have a four-man pressure. They don't even realize the split push is coming out. No one's there for the rotation. It looks like Nemesis is finally going to put himself in position to where he can get over there. But honestly, what can he do? Just with clear of the path, he'll have a great escape potential. Hand of the Gods used. Left side, more pressure coming out as they're keeping them locked down. You can see Zeros actually does find a kill early. They're pushing their uh, all their sights now to the tower. Yep. That Phoenix is going to go down quickly. Yep, there's a lot of damage there. Shell. Well, Sayo Searing Pain hitting a couple. He needs to get up in the action. Mox is able to get one. Badge is going to be weak here. They need to take out Captain Twig. He's still alive. The Geb Shield keeping him up down through the Vortex. He's not taking any damage. In comes Maniac. Maniac throwing down the hammer. Raffer just getting beat by Colossal Fury. That is going to be a double kill for Maniac. Four down. Sayo is the last remaining hope. I don't think you have the damage to do this, buddy. Frezzy's up and looks like now he's going to move move forward, look for an opportunity. He can't get in there. He's actually being very precarious. Oh. Misses the Frost Breath, gets stunned out himself. Titan getting very low. And in 21 minutes, it looks like we're going to see the first game uh, unexpectedly go to SK Gaming. Yeah, S SK did an amazing job the entire time. And, you know, I really think it comes all the way back to what you said at the very beginning. You know, we saw the AMC. Yeah. We we did see, you know, Sayo bring out the Raw. We, we didn't see comfort picks at all. And I think that's like the main thing for Mortality. I mean, you got to keep in mind, this was the team who got in from the play-in as well. They don't have necessarily the experience of some other people. I'd right. like to see them get comfort picks here going into this game number two. Yeah, I, I definitely don't want to see any more Amuz and Cobbs for the rest <laughs> of the SPL. How mad did you actually see were, like, when AMC... I just... I don't understand. Like, I know it was picked, and I was like, so mm, I how is he going to play this? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to check into the replay here, uh, show you just where things started... Oh, wait, we're uh, getting a line from production. Uh, it's actually, um, <laughs> they're, they're getting a better replay. They were going to line it up with a nice AMC. He grabbed the stinger to make the cooldown a little bit better. That's like the best part of his catch. <laughs> you know, th this, this character has proven how weak he is. I mean, he is just not strong enough right now. We're going to go into the replay. Oh. It looks like it is ready, and we're going to check in with a great rotation from Maniac. He forced out Nemesis early, got a bunch of damage on the tower, and then just watch this. This is the power of Amana. He was low health going into Dude, this fight. I, know. Look, I was getting ready to say, look at that health <laughs> regen, man. That's insane. And here's something else that's very, very unusual, right? How many times do we see a raw game and we're like, oh, my God, 15,000 player healing. Taking right. a look, Sayo, player healing. 553? That doesn't count himself. It only counts for the other uh, the other players. It's still wild. <laughs> but uh, we're going to go ahead and throw to Hindu Men, who uh, is on the floor, I think. Welcome back, guys. As you saw, SK Gaming came out flying in this one. 17-minute Baron, 21-minute game end. If this is going to be the start of the week, I can't wait to see how the rest of the day goes on. So hopefully we'll be back with more games soon. SK Gaming versus Mortality Game 2 coming up very soon to you guys. Once they both got themselves into lobby. I mean, overall, the fans here really enjoyed that one. As you can see, the, the stunts are silenced right now. Maybe I can make them make some noise. I'm not sure. Like, So guys, Swings a Blast right now. We'll be back with Game 2 before you know it.